Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a super fun summer project to make with your Cricut. This s'more station box is the perfect way to keep all your s'more supplies organized and ready to use for the summer. For this project, you'll need a 12 inch by 24 inch piece of vinyl. You'll need transfer tape, a weeding tool, your scraper, painter's tape, a wood box or wood to make your own box, sandpaper, wood glue, a nail gun or hammer and nails, staining supplies, a polyurethane finish, handles, your Cricut, a large cutting mat, and the cut file. So grab your supplies and then head over to your computer. The first thing we need to do is grab the SVG file we'll be using for this project. You can get it for free on my blog at burtonavenue.com. I keep all the SVG files for the projects that I make and share in my free SVG library. These files will work with all kinds of cutting machines and they're free to everyone. Once you're on my site, just click on free SVG files and then free SVG library. You will need a password to get into the library and there are instructions on the screen if you need to get one. Once you're in the library, you can search for the file S'more Station. It will either be listed under the most recent projects and cut files or under the summer category. You can also use your browser search to find it. I've added the unique code BA1534 after the file name to make finding the design a little bit easier. Once you've found the file, go ahead and click on that link and the files will be downloaded onto your computer. Now when you download these files online, they come in a zipped folder and you'll need to unzip or extract them before you can use them in Cricut Design Space. To do this, you'll need to go to the location where downloaded files are saved onto your computer. Once you're there, look for that zipped folder that we just downloaded and double click on it. A new window will open and somewhere you'll see the option to extract or unzip. Click on that and another window will open up. And this will show you where on your computer the unzip files will be saved. And you need to remember this location because you'll have to get back to it once you're in Cricut Design Space. Now go ahead and click on extract and those files will be unzipped and they're now ready to use in Design Space. So now we're going to head over to Cricut Design Space and start a new project. Once you're on the canvas screen, you can click on this upload button and then click upload image and then click on browse. And now you'll want to go to that location where the unzipped files were saved onto your computer. Once you're inside of that unzipped folder, you'll be able to see several different file types listed and we need to use an SVG file for this project. But you'll notice in my list of files, there's not an SVG file. And that's because on my computer, SVG files actually show up as Microsoft Edge HTML document. And sometimes they also show up as a Chrome HTML document. So if you don't see an SVG in this list of files, be sure to look for one of those instead. Now click on the SVG and then click open. Make sure it's the file that you want to work with and then click upload. Select that design one more time and click insert images. And now that design will appear on your canvas screen. So we need to resize this design so that it will fit on the front of our s'mores box. And to do that, we're going to create a rectangle that is the same size as the front of our box. So we're going to click on shapes and then choose square. And then we're going to go up here and unlock the padlock and put in the dimensions of the front of the box. And the size of my box is 22 inches wide by three and a half inches tall. And I'm just going to click on this minus sign so that we can see that rectangle a little bit better. So now this rectangle represents the front of my s'mores box. So now we can select this design and click on arrange and send to front. And then we can just drag it up here 
and then drag down these arrows to resize the design. And you'll just want to resize it so that it looks good on that rectangle. So I resized my design to about 21.3 inches by three and a quarter inches. When you're happy with the size, you can delete that rectangle and then select all of the design and right click and choose attach. And that will just lock all of these different pieces of the design into the same order that we see it on our screen. And that's really the only thing we need to do to set up this file to cut. So now you can go over and click on the green make it button. And this screen is just gonna show us what our design is gonna look like on our cutting mat. And this warning up here tells us that because our design is bigger than 11 and a half inches, we are going to need to use a large cutting mat. So over here, it will tell us that we need to use 12 inch by 24 inch piece of vinyl and use a larger cutting mat. So we're gonna click on OK. If everything looks good, you can click on the green continue button. And once Design Space finds your Cricut, you'll be taken to this screen. Make sure that your dial is cut to vinyl and then you can go load your cutting mat. So you're gonna place a piece of 24 inch vinyl on your large cutting mat. Smooth it out so there aren't any wrinkles or bubbles and then you can load it into your Cricut by pressing the up and down arrow button. When your Cricut is ready to cut, you'll see the C button light up. Press that and the machine will begin cutting. Once everything is finished being cut, you can press the up and down arrow button again to unload your mat. Remove the vinyl from the cutting mat and trim off any unused portion of the vinyl. Then you can weed away the excess vinyl from around your design. Use the weeding tool to help you remove those small pieces from inside of the letters. Place a piece of transfer tape sticky side up on your work surface and then place your vinyl on top of that. Rub over the design firmly with your scraper and then trim off the excess transfer tape and vinyl backing. Now that our vinyl is ready to go, let's go work on the box. This wood box is really easy to make because it's all straight cuts. The great thing about this box is you can make it any size you want. My finished box measures about 22 inches by nine inches and has room for chocolate bars, graham crackers, marshmallows, and roasting sticks. But if you want more or less space, you can adjust the size to fit your needs. So for a 22 inch by nine inch box, you'll need one 20.5 inch by 7.5 inch piece for the bottom. And I cut this from a one by eight piece of pine. You'll need two 22 inch by three and a half inch pieces for the front and back and two seven and a half by three and a half inch pieces for the sides. And I cut all four of those pieces from a one by four piece of pine. If you want to add dividers inside of the box, you can also use a one by three inch piece of pine for those. And you'll cut those down to size after you've built your box. Use some sandpaper and sand over all of the pieces of wood. Make sure that the front piece where your vinyl is going is nice and smooth so that the vinyl will stick properly. To assemble the box, you'll need to add some wood glue along the bottom of one of the side pieces. Use a nailer or a hammer and nails to secure the side piece to the bottom of the box. Repeat with the other side. Next, add some wood glue to the bottom and sides of the front piece and nail that into place. And then repeat those steps with the back piece. If there's any excess glue, make sure to wipe it away quickly. This is really important if you are going to stain your box. If you want to add dividers, you'll need to measure the inside of your box to get the dimensions. For this box, I wanted two smaller compartments on the right side for the graham crackers and chocolate bars. I used two pieces of wood that measured seven and a half by two and a half inches. Then on the left side, I wanted two long skinny compartments, one for the marshmallows and the other for the roasting sticks. That piece of wood measures about 13 by two and a half inches. You can cut 
glue and nail all those pieces into place. Now that the box is all assembled, you can stain it. Remove any sanding dust and then stain with the color of your choice. I use dark walnut for my box. I like to use a foam brush to apply the stain. I usually apply it and then wipe it right off with an old towel or a blue shop paper towel. But if you'd like a darker color, you can let it sit for about 10 minutes before you wipe it off. Once you've got your box all stained, let it dry for a couple of hours. Next, we need to apply a polyurethane finish so that the vinyl will stick to the box. You can either brush on a finish or use a spray. I use the spray on triple thick polyurethane in satin. After your sealer has had plenty of time to dry, it's time to add the vinyl design. For this project, we're going to be using the hinge method to apply the vinyl to the box. To do this, you'll place the design on the center of your box and then put a piece of painter's tape over the center of it. Use a ruler to make sure the design is straight and centered. Once it's in place, press down on the tape. Next, you're going to separate the vinyl and the vinyl backing from the right half of your design. Pull the vinyl over the tape and then cut off and remove the vinyl backing. Now use your scraper to press down that portion of the design. You'll want to start at the tape and push to the right. Now you can remove the painter's tape and the rest of the vinyl backing. Use a scraper to press down the rest of the design and then you can carefully pull off the transfer tape. To complete this project, you can attach handles to the sides of the box and then fill it up with all your favorite s'more supplies. If you like this project and want to see more like it, be sure to subscribe and click on that notification bell so you'll get notified each time I post a new video.